Howdy everybody, and welcome to episode 4 of the Mega Man tutorial. Well, last time we left off with the music manager. You can give it a sprite if you want. We got a little note there that I drew. And we said we want to go to the copyright room. So let's go over to our rooms in this episode. Oh, and uh, let's come back to our room in it. Just wanted to make sure that we actually had the uh, in it, uh, object in, it in there. So that's in there. That's good. And let's go to room copyright. I have no idea why that tries to do with that. Because we are going to need to make a copyright object. So uh, next thing's next. Come over to our objects here and let's add a new group. We're going to make room objects. These are objects that do stuff in rooms, but aren't necessarily gameplay oriented directly or something like that. So we're going to start off by making object copy right. And open that up, give it a little There, come back to the room, drag it in, put it over here in the corner. Let me make sure that's right. No, actually, we're going to put it right there because we're going to draw this object into the room. So we need to set up a create event. And for our create event, we're going to have a little dialogue. Oops. And we're going to make this a string literal because this is going to print out exactly the way it's put into here, into the room. The difference between a string and a string literal is if I were to type this and then put it that and that, if a string would allow you to do this, it would not include the backspaces. That wouldn't include the new lines. But a string literal will include those new lines. So let's go C 1988 Capcom Co.ltd. <clears throat> Gonna give it a uh, two lines there, two spaces, TM and C1988. Make sure you remember the uh, lowercase c because lowercase c is our copyright symbol. Capcom u.s.a.inc. Capcom u.s.a.inc. Uh, comma. All right, two more lines. Licensed by two more lines. Nintendo of America. Dot ink dot. And that should be all for that. Then we're gonna need a fade underscore speed underscore is equal to zero dot zero zero five. Wait underscore duration equal to sec times four. Wait underscore timer underscore is equal to negative one. Alpha underscore is equal to zero. Mode underscore is equal to true. And draw underscore set underscore h align. Fa underscore center. Round score set and square V in line. FA underscore middle. And last but not least, we are going to set our cameras mode. Object underscore camera dot state underscore is equal to camera underscore mode dot fixed. Because we want the camera in this room to be fixed to the top left corner. Uh, these here. We can actually put those into the draw event. I put them into the step event because I wanted to kind of, uh, so I wouldn't be doing it every single uh, frame, but 
I decided, well, we could be drawing something for debugging purposes or whatever, and that would cause the uh, alignments to change or whatever. So we'll put them here so that our text remains properly aligned. Draw underscore set underscore alpha would be alpha. Draw underscore text. Room underscore width divided by two. Room room underscore height divided by two. Dialog and reset R alpha. And you probably also want to draw underscore set underscore color C underscore white just to make sure. Remains white while we draw. So that uses our uh, alpha, and uh, we'll be changing that around over in the step event here in a second. So let's add in a step event for this. If, uh, okay, this uh, code here is just copied and pasted pretty much from the transition object. It's fairly uh, simple greater than or equal to one, and weight underscore timer underscore is less than or equal to negative one. So uh, when our alpha is greater than one, so our text is fully visible, and the weight timer is less than or equal to negative one, then we set mode underscore equal to not mode underscore because we want to start counting down our timer that will tell us to move to the next room. And weight underscore timer underscore equal to weight underscore duration underscore. So, uh, If weight underscore timer underscore is less than or equal to zero, then here's the code from our the code from our transition object. It's just uh, using the little uh, fade speed code here and using point one instead of point zero zero five, except fade speed is actually 0 0.005 there. And that's, uh, well, we, uh, during the wait timer, when, um, we are, when we start up the object, we go from, uh, an alpha of zero and a wait timer of negative one. Um, Actually, let me just write out this. I think I confused myself on what I'm doing here. Less than or equal to zero. I've done this before and it's really annoying when I do. Go to room underscore control. All right, that'll be uh, when we actually start the transition there. All right, so let's see if we can uh, see what we're doing here. So if our alpha is less than or equal to zero, then start up a fade transition to the intro room. Because, uh, okay, we actually start at zero. And this wait timer starts at negative one. So wait timer is less than or equal to zero. Then if mode is true, we start with mode equal to true then we move our alpha towards one. So that would make it so that the alpha would be greater than zero at this point because we've done this little calculation. So we don't start up a fade transition at this point. And the alpha moves towards one and wait timer is going down Let's 
see, I said wait time, wait duration, wait timer. We have alpha underscore greater than or equal to negative one, wait timer less than or equal to negative one. So we're going up. And once we actually get all the way to one, then our wait timer is set to, okay, yeah. So uh, it's going down at this point, but it doesn't matter that we keep going down because it doesn't really matter at this point. So uh, then once we actually get to uh, our alpha reaches one, then we switch the mode to uh, false and then we start counting down and we also have set our wait underscore timer to wait duration at this point. So uh, that means that wait timer, okay, yeah, wait timer is uh, how long the text will be fully visible. And then once the wait timer is again back down to less than or equal to zero, then the alpha starts going down and the text fades out. And then once the text fades out fully, we do a transition into the next room, room intro. There we go, finally, got it right. <laughs> I could have made this much simpler, actually. I don't know why I did it so confusedly. Uh, so yeah, then we uh, draw this stuff here, but uh, we want to be able to skip this text. So uh, skip copyright because if the player presses a button specifically start they can just skip right to the uh, to the uh, start of the game so if object underscore input dot start underscore press underscore you know what I've forgotten this entire time I've forgotten to zoom in sheesh my head's really not into it today isn't it uh, so if we've uh, pressed our start button then we do persistent equal to true. Speaking of persistent, yes, uh, music is uh, persistent, just making sure. Because uh, we are going to be skipping directly to the next room and we don't want to leave our object behind because we need to remember to set some other things. Room underscore go to underscore next. And alarm zero is equal to one. And let's set up alarm zero. Excuse me. Object underscore introduction, which we haven't made yet, but we will. Skip underscore equal to true instance underscore destroy so we need to create a object introduction so underneath room objects create object underscore introduction and let me uh, pull that open we need to go over to backgrounds we're actually going to use the city sprite as the back as the uh, sprite for the uh, object introduction and this one is going to be a lot like this copyright, except more complicated because not only do we have to display text, it has to fade in and out, change the text, fade in and out, fade in and out, fade in and out, and change the text each time. And then it has to trigger a uh, animation as the uh, city falls away and displays Mega Man. So let me check our time. How long are we on here? We're at 14 minutes. So uh, let's see what we can do here. We'll just set this up real quick here and we'll leave the rest for, for next time. So object underscore camera dot state underscore is equal to cam underscore mode dot free because we don't want it to, uh, if we actually go to our room intro, intro I've already tiled it for you. We have, uh, let me zoom out. We have a tile layer, an instance layer, top tiles, which are for these tiles right here because 
we want them to be above uh we want them to be below instances so the mega man will appear above them but uh, also below the other tiles so that they can uh, display so they don't block out so they block out the city properly if we drag in our city object here and make sure I get this to the right position so come on over here drag you down use control to drag this so that the base of the city matches up with the base of the tower. Oops. Come on, drag. There we go. All right, so the uh, object is in the right position because we're going to move this around a little bit to give the parallax effects as you uh, jump up the uh, tower here. Uh, camera mode be free because we want to set the camera's position to focus on the object. Dot x is equal to zero. Object and for camera dot y is equal to room underscore height minus object underscore camera dot view underscore height. This will automatically put us at the bottom of the room plus the room height. We can't put it equal to the uh, object's height because then that wouldn't display the blank space down here where we will be displaying the text. And let's give this a try, see what happens if we uh, press play here, see if we can find the errors. There we go. First one, unknown function or script palette swap in it. So I told you about uh, palette swapping and uh, that I didn't include it because I didn't want to include uh, Pixelated Pope's uh, work. So just remember to import the uh, palette swap into your project if you have it. There we go. And there it goes, fades out finally. And we jump into the room. No, the camera seems to be a bit off. Oh, I want to do it by two. I want the zoom to be out by two. I come back here. Let me check my code to make sure I got this all right. 256, 240, width, height, floor display. Oh, it should be display height divided by view height. There we go. And like I showed you earlier, fades out. And we are in the city at the right place. We have the black spot. We're ready to go. All right, so we'll uh, leave it off there and we'll go and uh, get everything ready for our tutorial uh, for uh, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but for the next one where we will get into making the introduction. So uh, before we go, I'd like to thank my Patreon sponsors by shooting your names. We have Fragile Heart, Kuru Patreon, Damien, and Kenneth Klein. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the NES Game Maker. And I will try to make your donations work towards making future products just like this. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure. So good luck with your programming.